I'm Kelly Kearney with Star and Constellation Magazine, and with me today is actress Andrea Anders. Fans might remember Andrea as Mrs. Ted Lasso on Apple TV, the hit comedy series of the same name, Ted Lasso. And now she's back with a new series, Bookie, on Max, and it's uh, airing um, November 30th. Thank you for taking the time today, Andrea, to talk with me. Uh, I watched the, the trailer for Bookie, and it was fantastic. So um, tell me, and the fans, because maybe they are not so aware of the show just yet, but tell me and the fans how this show was kind of described to you and the character when you bought the project. Excuse me. Um, you know, I got the script to audition and it was one of those, this doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen where you read the script and you're like, oh no, that's very good. And I really want it. <laughs> a lot of times you read it and you go, all right, I'll give it a shot. Or, or it can be very good. And you know, you're not exactly the right fit for it, but you'll try this one. I was like, I love this script. I love this character. I know I can do it. Please, 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 please give it to me. <laughs> So, um, that, and all of that, just to say that I fell in love with it the moment I read it. And I just think that Nick Bakai and, uh, Chuck Lorre did something special. Um, the way I say it, and I hope it's okay with them, but it's almost like Curb Your Enthusiasm and The Sopranos had a baby. Yes. That's yeah. exactly what it felt like from the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. It's very dark. It's very funny. You know, we just went to the screening this week. And so it was the first time that I had seen a few things in the show. I don't know how many times I've ever gasped and laughed at the same time <laughs> and, and, and immediately thought, how did they do that? That's impressive. That's impressive to make an audience member gasp and, and, and laugh. And I had already seen it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, Chuck Lorre, and you're, he's a creative sitcom comedy genius. You know, every hit you could think of from The Big Bang Theory to Two and a Half Men. Uh, it's just a fantastic project for you. And it must have been career defining kind of to work with this uh, behemoth of uh, comedy and TV. Was there anything that you learned from Chuck? Uh, maybe his process on set or advice he gave you in the cast that you'll kind of take with you to another project in the future? That's a really good question. You know, it's funny. I had been in the room with Chuck so many times trying to get into those shows. <laughs> um, <laughs> still waiting to hear. Um, but uh, it, and so I had never gotten the opportunity to work with him, but I certainly had gotten close. And so this was, this was very exciting and intimidating and all of that too. But you know, he said something when we started and Jimmy Burroughs said a similar thing. And so I do take this with me, which is, look, you were chosen for a reason. So just do that <laughs> and try not to second guess it and try not to do anything less or anything more. Just do the thing you did <laughs> when you came in. That was the reason we picked you. And so I just, you know, because it can get tricky, you know, when you get on set, you get you can get insecure, you can get worried. And so you just always remember that. Hey, look, they they wanted you because of what you did just keep doing that so so that was nice it's a nice thing to remember that's a great that's great advice and yeah. you know when the show kind of was uh they were talking about it online and released the trailer when the news broke that chuck and charlie <laughs> gene had put their past behind them and were set to work together again on this it had like the two and a half men fans really hyped for the show and everyone's just kind of excited to kind of see how that dynamic is going to work out and and everyone loves you know that combination of comedy and the director so i was just wondering what was the was the reunion surprise was the reunion a surprise for you or had you kind of known about that before you started on the project uh you know it was written into the pilot so it was nice. more for me when when i read the pilot to audition you're just wondering i guess are they really going to actually be able to get him? You know, they write that, but, uh, you know, and then cut to the table read and there he is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have to say, lovely man, Charlie Sheen, really lovely man. He did a really funny thing where when we started the table read, everybody went around and said who they were and who they were playing. So um, we got to Charlie and Charlie said, um, oh, hello, my name is Charlie Sheen and I will be playing Charlie Sheen. <laughs> it's just like- What a veteran. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, exactly, a veteran and and a great guy. And um, yeah, it was 
to see them together and to work together, clearly there's a bond there that goes deep and has a long history. And there was nothing but loveliness around it. It was very nice. It was very sweet. I mean, they created magic before. They'll create it again on this, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. When we were on the Warner Brothers lot, most of the time we were on location, but every once in a while we were shooting on the lot. And you wander around. There's like 19 stages with Chuck Lorre. <laughs> I was like, wait, he is amazing. The whole lot. <laughs> I was like, he literally has every stage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. It's, I really, I, I kind of thought, wow, what a, what an interesting life path. You know? Yeah. And now you're a part of it. And, you know, I feel like the this <laughs> series definitely go beyond uh, the usual one or two season order. So fingers you're crossed open. because yeah, the show he- looks fantastic. Um, when you were booked in the role, how was your character described to you? I don't want to give away too much for fans, but there's a little bit maybe we could talk about. So how was she described to you? You know, I, I, I'm not sure that I have this right. This is how my memory (laughs) remembers it. And I'm not sure. I hope I don't make anybody upset, but the way I remember it was that she was described as a former cocktail waitress, a former Las Vegas cocktail waitress she's had a hard time. <laughs> oh, so it's kind of pretty vague. But it did give me an idea for, you know, how to dress and how to do my hair for the audition. I mm-hmm. I, um, I did, I cocktail waitress for a very long time, um, never in Las Vegas, but for some reason that description, I was like, okay, I think I get it. <laughs> so. And you also the- play a mother of a 10 year old and you're married to the lead of the show, a bookie named Danny. Uh, who's played by stand-up comedian and uh, uh, someone who played in The Sopranos world in the spinoff, um, uh, Sebastian, uh, Men- I always get his last name wrong, Sebastian Menes Calico. Yes, uh, very good, you got it, you got it. <laughs> I always get it wrong, it's kind of a little bit of a tongue um, But Sebastian brings his East Coast vibe and his attitude to this gut-busting kind of action and comedy uh, combo. And um, I was just wondering, anyone who saw his work is obviously going to be ready to laugh, but how much of an opportunity for improv did you guys have? Since that's kind of also part of his career. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, um, it was it was extremely scripted. We stuck close to the script. Um, um, so I, I don't know how that will change if we do get to go to a second season, if there'll be more improv or not, but it was, uh, we stuck we stuck pretty close to that script. Um, yeah. And, you know, I was, and still am a huge fan of Sebastian's. And so it's always hard when you have to go in and kind of be cool with the person that you're (laughs) like, Oh my God, (laughs) I'm hanging out with him right now. And so I tried my best. I didn't do a good job. I just babbled (laughs) and was like, you know, Fan. I'm, I'm able a- to keep a straight face in some of those scenes because he's so naturally he's so funny. funny, even yeah. physical. His physicality is even funny. Yeah, he's just, he's such a genius. I think, you know, luckily for us, our stuff is so, uh, what's that word, frictional. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of that. But no, there were times I had to really work hard and then wait till they yelled cut and then let it go. But you, know, you don't want to ruin the take. But yeah, he's just, he's so funny. But he was, he was, he was very, uh, very grounded, very present, everything you want in an acting partner. He did it all. He brought it all. And it was, um, it was really impressive and, you know, never meet your heroes, but that one <laughs> was okay. <laughs> that one's golden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's still up there for me, still on a pedestal for me. So. <laughs> and like, you know, Sebastian is the story uh, about Bookie and Danny, the bookie, he's trying to keep his head above water and kind of this online betting world now. And, and the online betting world is, pun intended, kind of kneecapped his career, let's just say. Um, so he is kind of around these, he's a risk taker. He's kind of around these wild and often chaotic and volatile and desperate people. And his life is maybe not as stable as a mother would want to bring a 10-year-old into their lives. So what do you think the appeal is with Danny for Sandra? Money. Mm. <laughs> No, I, I I think she actually genuinely loves him. I think they love each other. I think it's a very interesting love story. Um, and it's, it's just set in a very dark world. And I think she, this character struggles with that, that she's got this lifestyle that is nice, 
uh, that comes with a cost as many times those lifestyles do. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> like you said, <laughs> a little bit of Sopranos, a little bit, of, you know, a little bit put in yeah. there. It's kind of the yeah. same, you know, I, yeah, I got yeah, that yeah, vibe exactly. from her. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, some of the best moments of the series, uh, of the series trailer, uh, were all the action sequences between Danny Sebastian and his partner, Ray, who was played by Omar J. Dorsey. It looks like those two had a great time filming. It was like a laugh riot. So thinking of back to your part of filming the show, what was your favorite scene to film? And maybe what was your favorite scene to watch others film you kind of wish you had maybe been in? Oh, you know, I think generally speaking, the relationship between Omar and Sebastian would be what I would say, gosh, I, I wish I could get in there somehow. <laughs> it wouldn't be right. Um, but they're just, <laughs> I love the two of them together. It just, I loved it on the page. I loved it when we were shooting. I just love those two so much. And yeah, I don't know if you can tell, I have equal amounts of passion and envy. I just want to be in it. I want to be in their couple. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's so great. It's so great. And honestly, on and off screen, watching the two of them was just a, a complete delight. Omar's amazing. <laughs> they had a fantastic kind of romance in a lot of the, a lot of the scenes that I was just kind of, just from the pre the trailer, I thought, this is like uh, bad boys a little bit. They're just so yeah. funny. It's like a good cup, bad cop sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really great. And they get an opportunity to comment on, um, you know, big subjects too. Mm -hmm. yeah and you know uh we have to go back and talk a little bit about legendary actor charlie sheen um yeah. and then obviously uh, uh the cast you know the stand-up comedian and you have omar and you have you the dynamics must have been fantastic offset so let's talk about some funny behind the scenes moments that you guys had was there any stories that you can share with fans you know, it's funny, we were shooting that show right up until the um, writer strike. And when I say that, I mean, to the hour. I mean, they we wrapped that show very late Sunday night and the writer strike happened Monday morning. So we had to get it done. And on our very last day of shooting, the um, prediction was that we, we would be wrapped around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. I think we wrapped at like 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and so at one point, you know, that, that can happen on sets and it, it actually creates magic of its own. And there you are deliriously tired and unsure of your future <laughs> when you're going to be sleeping next. And, um, and all, it was all of us, Jorge, Vanessa, Omar, Sebastian, and myself, we were all in this scene together in this house, um, in the middle of the night. And at one point, um, uh, um, you know what? I'm going to stop saying this because it just occurred to me. Omar might not want me to tell you this. <laughs> okay. Well, we don't want to cause any rifts between yeah. the cats. It wasn't that. It was good. It was a super impressive move. I, I was like, I was like that. I can't. It was so great. We had this break and he, he went and got a steak. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was saying those kind of long nights, it kind of devolves into kind of silliness. And I think yeah, yeah, the cast yeah. probably come yeah. together a little more on yeah. those behind the scenes moments. <laughs> yeah. So I don't I know love that. Divulge that, but I say it with complete reverence. I was like, wow, you went and you got a steak. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, you I, know, I, I would be remiss not to mention your work on the Emmy award-winning series, Ted Lasso. It just ended, maybe, <laughs> earlier this year. We right. fans, of course, wanted to come back. We have no idea. But when the series wrapped, did you take anything of Mrs. Ted Lasso with you, like a piece of memorabilia or something to remind yourself of the time that you were on the show? No, you know, it's funny that um, I shot, I was very fortunate to go to travel to London and shoot in London. And the very last thing we shot, we ended up shooting it in uh, like Calabasas. So <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't actually like with the, on the proper set. So there wasn't much to snag. <laughs> that was the only time you went to, to London to film, right? Was the final season. Uh, I went to London in 2019, uh, to shoot the first season. And then the second season, uh, they shot during COVID and I did a remote shoot, uh, from mm -hmm. my house. Um, and then the third season I went back to London and, um, and then the final shot we shot in LA. <laughs> well, because he, he, the final shot was him coming back to Kansas. Right, right, right. So I have to ask then because, you know, fans, they were so obsessed with that show and obviously they 
were, you know, uh, passionate about the ending, passionate about the finale. So I have to ask, if there was an opportunity to bring Ted Lasso back, which I could hear the fans already screaming, yes, 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 yes. Um, if there was an opportunity to do that and have a continuance of his story, do you, would you foresee or would you want to have a Ted and Michelle kind of romantic reunion? Because it left it really kind of unsure. Yeah, right, right. That's funny. I know people come up to me and they go, what happened? I'm like, I don't know. I saw as much as you saw. <laughs> um, I would love that. Yeah, I think we should. Let's me and you go pitch it. <laughs> All right. I mean, Jason, he was like, oh, I'm not going to do it anymore. And we're like, hmm, I don't know. I feel like that fourth season might be sitting out there a little bit waiting to be picked up. I don't know. You never know. You never know. I hope so. I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope I'm right, too. It was probably one of my favorite watches, especially during COVID. And I think uh, the it gave so many people so much joy and um, at the time when we really needed it. And I think that's why the fans are like holding on to it because they like that was a moment that we felt good during a time when nobody felt good. Yeah, I think so. You know, I we my my portion of it was shot at the end of 2019. So, you know, the beginning of 2020, we all know what happened. And then it hit while we were all locked inside. So it was a really bizarre experience because intellectually I knew that it had hit. Um, but I didn't really <laughs> you couldn't feel it because we were inside. Locked so up. Yeah, yes, yeah. so it was a really interesting experience to then finally be sort of released back into the world and go, oh, that's right. Yeah, this is a hit. This is <laughs> this is everywhere. Um, what a what a gift. And it kind of sparked all these uh these uh careers, you know. I mean, I think like right. now everyone is really kind of in the know, you know, they're winning Emmys and everything. So I think it was a fantastic project for Apple for you guys. And I do hope it comes back, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, so what's next for you, Andrea? You're you're doing the show. You're doing press for this right now. And it's coming out the 30th on Max. Um, yeah. Are you working on any other projects, reading for things, stuff like that? In a couple of weeks, I go back. Now that both strikes are over, I so fortunately get to go back to the second season of that 90s show. So we got to shoot the first season and then we got lined up to shoot the second season and the strikes happened. So we've all been waiting and um, they're back and I get to go back um, in a couple of weeks. So really nice really nice little christmas gift as well <laughs> that is nice nice that the strike is over nice that work is picking back up definitely definitely yeah so for the fans who have followed you from ted lasso they're going to follow you to the 90s show they're going to follow you to bookie for sure what would you like to say to them that have followed your career and really enjoy your work oh that's so nice um just thank you it's you know it was really sweet i was sitting um outside yesterday waiting for a friend and um a 16 year old boy came up to me and asked me for a picture <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh <laughs> I never expected a teen boy to care <laughs> uh <laughs> he was a Ted Lasso fan and it was very sweet and he was very sweet and whoever you are thank you it, it was it was lovely but I just I just appreciate so much that people appreciate the work and and that you know the fans keep us working and I'm always so happy to say thank you back to them. So I just, that's what I would say is thank you. Thank you. 